Hi there, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is a short video to show you how to fit the little metal clips onto a CV boot or a tripod boot because they actually require a special tool and that's one of these things and you can go and get these at pretty much any motor factors, any car parts suppliers should be able to sell you one of these and of course they'll sell you the clips and as you well know that you know CV boots, tripod boots, they do fail over time, they perish the grease leaks out then all the dirt gets into the joint and it vastly accelerates the wear on that joint and of course then they start to click and fail and oh, it all goes to pot. Uh, in England if a CV boot or a tripod boot has got a rip in it then it's, a, it's a, an MOT fail uh, here in New Zealand, they can have rips in them, it's only when the grease gets onto a brake component and contaminates the brakes that it becomes a WAF fail. But either way, they need to be fixed, you know, you can't just drive around with them all broken because it doesn't take very long from, for the joints to get contaminated, and then it costs you a lot more money in the long run. Now, I've just dug out one more or the other front drive shaft off the infamous RAV4 and for those of you that were really, really astute, on one of my very first videos that I made back in December 2015, I ran out of those little clips and I cheated and I did what a lot of garages do and, and I used cable ties and that's bad. And you can see why it's bad. Can you see that the grease is leaking out because there's insufficient pressure holding that boot in place? So I thought today, before I put the engine, or well, we start, you know, getting all the parts ready to reassemble that vehicle, I'll uh, I'll just replace these two clips. I'll get rid of the zip ties and I'll put the clips on, and I'm going to show you how to fit the new clips. Here we go. Okay, so the first job is obviously to get rid of the old bad cable ties really bad. I felt so bad doing that, honestly. Look at the size of that crappy little cable tie as well. Okay, so now we'll just get a rag whilst we've still got access. I'm just going to clean off some of that, uh, that residue. Okay, ooh, look at that, nasty. Okay, clean those off. Make sure there's no leakage. Wow, that grease didn't last long, did it? That's actually been replaced. Okay, so now we can slide that boot back on into place. He says with complete confidence. There we go. She's on. Right. Excellent. Cool. So many rags today. Right, we will start with the small one. That's always the easiest, I think. Okay. So get your new clip, pull it all the way out, and uh, which way should we go? Let's do it the other way around. We'll do it that way around so it's a bit easier for the camera. Okay. So we'll thread that through there. We're going to go all the way around and back through again because that really makes them a lot stronger and it actually helps when you tension them up. Okay, so now make sure you're in the groove and just pull it tight by hand, there you go. And then bend it back by, well, about 120 degrees, I suppose. And that way it's not gonna slip back through and it's gonna hold its tension. And then you can get your tool, special tool number 36B, and we can now, I'll show you how it works. It's got a little cutter at this end, for, for cutting through the wire, the well, the band, and at this end it's got like a really cool little winch drum thing with a with a slot in it, and of course it's got like a feeder at the front, another slot where the where the band first goes in. So you grab the band, make sure it's reasonably straight, and then feed that through the front of the tool, through the cutter, down towards the drum, and it needs to go through the slot. In the drum there we go look and it will go out through the bottom usually and then we can start to to wind that up to get tension now 
don't don't start to actually tension the band yet because you just want to just get it tight and then move the tool across so the band is in line with what the direction it's feeding from through that coupling there then we'll tension it up there we go and once you've got the right tension bend it back to where you started keeping the tension on and now we can do the cut so we'll cut that there look perfect and then get rid of your tool bend that flat do it pretty quick you don't want to leave it hanging because it might slip back and then just flatten it off that's going to give it a nice 180 degree turn so there's no way it's going to lose tension now and this little tail is just held down by these two little tiny tangs on here which you can just hammer those over with your little hammer you see I knew it had a job there you go perfect so that's that one done and now we can do the big one on this end just do a recap okay now obviously these are a little bit bigger but exactly the same principle open it out there we go and slide it over take it back round on itself back through the coupling again and now you can tension it up by hand and it wants to be you know make sure you're in the groove it's a little bit harder with a big one so you know make sure you're all the way in yep that's fine pull it tight by hand and then just bend it back there we go and now we can get the tool get rid of the old bit there we go okay right so back through the tool again through the front through the cutter down to the drum align the groove in the drum feed it through out through the bottom take up the tension roll the tool over so that the bands in the in the right orientation tension it up there we go nice and tight don't, don't over tighten it obviously and then when you're ready bring it back across so that it's almost back on itself and then we can cut it so we'll just cut it off now and there we go bend it back down get rid of the tool get your hammer flatten it down flatten down the two little tabs remove your glove and there you go done perfect and all that tensioning just brought some more oil out so we'll give that a bit of a clean just shows how much pressure you can get on with them. Really, really good. A million times better than a cable tie. So if you ever look under your car and you find cable ties holding the CV joint on and the garage has just replaced it, take it back and say, hey, it should be metal clips. So there you go. One of my shortest videos, I'm sure. Uh, that's how to fit the metal bands onto a CV joint boot or a tripod boot. And you can use these things for other stuff as well. You know, I mean, there's there's plenty of places you can use these in your vehicle and if you're an off-roader you want oh, to clip brackets to roll cages and stuff and these are quite a good way of doing it okay so you're gonna need one of these and uh, they are available pretty much any uh, motorist kind of store outlet part supplier uh, motor factors we call them in England and um, they're about $20 here in New Zealand so probably in England about 10 10 15 pounds um, and you know you need one definitely need one of those and you should always keep a few of these in your toolbox as well if you've got one of those tools. It's really useful. Um, and also, a little hammer. This is pretty much the only job I ever use this little hammer for. So, you know, it makes it feel wanted. It's a good little hammer. I've had this little hammer about 35 years. It's had three handles and nine heads. Same hammer. No, seriously, same hammer. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, I don't know part numbers of boot kits and stuff for various cars. That's your motor factor's job. But if you've got any questions you know, about the actual fitment or technical aspects, if there are any, then uh, please do ask. Ask away and I'll do my best to help. Um, if you'd love to subscribe, it'd be great to have you on, uh, you know, on the team uh, with the crew. There's about 300 and... I don't know, 330 odd uh, subscribers now, which is great. Have a party when it's a thousand, I reckon, don't you? Uh, click subscribe, and if you want notifications, click on the little gear symbol next to it, 
and of course then you'll receive an email whenever I upload any new videos and there's usually two, three, five, who knows, every week. It just depends on my other workload to be honest, how much teaching I'm doing. Okay, uh, you will also find me on uh, Instagram and Facebook and I think I'm on Twitter as well but I very rarely go on there so probably best not leave a message on that one. And uh, you can get, get uh, contact me via that way as well. Okay, well thanks for watching crew, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Cheers, over and out.